Hey everybody, Arnaldo here broadcasting from Fidelio's Frequency. Welcome to my channel. Record Store Day 2024 is on April 20th, that is next Saturday, and I have a huge stack of records that I was able to get and I'd like to share with you. I'd like to do quick unboxings and talk to you a little bit about these releases. So let's get right into it. And here we go with our Record Store Day 2024 preview and unboxing. So let's start right off with the heavy stuff, heavy metal or hard rock, whatever you want to call it. This first release, I think actually we can call it heavy metal. Talking about Motorhead's Remorse No, issued, I believe the run is 2,000 uh, pressings, uh, 2,000 copies of this release, and it is the 40th anniversary of the release of the original compilation album that came out called No Remorse. That compilation that came out in 1984 was kind of to tie up their tenure, the band's tenure on the label, uh, Bronze Records. And after six years, they released the uh, compilation album of the best songs during that period. And this album, Remorse No, is a redux. It's a reworking of the same running order, the same songs. But here we have instead either demos, alternate versions, live renditions. I listened to this. Actually, it sounds very good. It is on silver vinyl, as you saw. And... Some of the songs that kind of piqued my interest were the 2019 single edit of Overkill, their cover of Louie Louie. It's, it's really more the alternate version of that cover. Snaggletooth, the demo of that. Some of the live songs, uh, being them from like the early 80s, might not, be, might not be in the best quality in terms of the original source. Uh, maybe considered almost archival, but definitely fans of Motorhead will uh, appreciate this uh, reworking of the same track listing song list that was issued on No Remorse. So Motorhead, Remorse No. Next up is actually a release that piqued my interest because of the cover. And being a huge Beatles fan, Paul McCartney and Wings, when I saw this, I was like, oh, I want to hear this. I want to listen to this. And as you can see, it is a parody or reworking of Paul McCartney and Wings' album, Band on the Run. Here we have Corey Taylor, one of the escapees from prison. Oh, the name of the release is CMF to be or not to be, a play on Corey Taylor's last album that came out at the end of 2023. I think it was November of 2023. Corey Taylor, band member or frontman um, of Slipknot, and uh, CMF to be uh, CMF two actually is the name of that album. Was his second solo album. This is collecting alternate, uh, actually outtakes or B sides from those recording sessions, augmented by one live track of a Slipknot track which i really love the version that is on this album it is a live version in the from london from the london show of 2016 of the song snuff and augmented by i think six uh five or six cover songs and some uh i enjoyed more than others one i had no idea what it was i actually had to look it up a song the first uh, cover on the record is Tank by a band called Life, Sex, and Death. was not familiar with that at all. And then you have very, uh, very well-known songs. The Killing Moon by Echo and the Bunnymen. I love Echo's uh, original version. This is a different take. It strips down the goth atmosphere, no strings. It's more of a rock version of The Killing Moon. I was very impressed by the last song, uh, the cover of 10 Years Gone by Led Zeppelin. Other covers are Is It My Body, I believe that's an Alice Cooper song, uh, Shot in the Dark by Ozzy Osbourne, and Killing Machine by Judas Priest. So I'm sure this is definitely geared, aimed at fans of Slipknot and of Corey Taylor. I don't think you will be disappointed with this collection of songs. Corey Taylor, CMF 
to be or not to be. That is a run of 1,800, I believe, uh, copies. Next up is a band that I love. I have been following them for the past 30 years. I think their first, their debut album came out in 1995. And this is a very welcomed release. It's a short one because it only has uh, uh, four songs. So it qualifies as an EP. And I'm talking about Garbage, Lie to Me, issued in uh, a run of 2,500 on yellow, as you can see here, uh, transparent vinyl. And what does it have? It has three unreleased tracks and one remix. So the one remix is Bad Boyfriend. Uh, that features actually Dave Grohl on drums. And the three unreleased tracks are Better Not Lie to Me, Revenge and Hunt, and a beautiful version. Obviously, nothing tops the version by This Mortal Coil of the Tim Buckley song, Song to the Siren. So definitely worth picking this one up if you're a fan of Garbage, because these are tracks that are, are basically not available anywhere else. Garbage, lie to me. The next release, I was actually quite surprised. I did not know what to expect. I only was attracted by the name Danny Harrison, George Harrison's son, and by the fact that it is on Dark Horse Records. I'm talking about the album Dreamers in the Field, which has Hoon Hoor 2, Carmen Rizzo, and Danny Harrison. Hoon Hoor 2 is a throat singer, and that should give you a little bit of hint about um, on what this sounds like. Uh, backdrop of music, instruments, whether acoustic or electronic, played by Danny Harrison as well as Carmen Rizzo. So we have a blend of Eastern influences, Eastern music, as well as Western music. Uh, definitely interesting, probably requires a few spins. I only listened to it once. Uh, it sounds pretty good. Uh, definitely will have to listen to it again because again, I wasn't ready for the throat singing, but if you are, a limited run of 800, Dreamers in the Field by, in the field by Hoon Hoor Zhu, sorry, Hoon Hoor 2, Carmen Rizzo, and Danny Harrison. Another release that I picked up because of the name. I know of this artist because he's a producer. Uh, he's well known. Uh, he's been featured on various other artists' albums. I was not entirely familiar with his solo body of work. I'm talking about Lee Scratch Perry. This is a unique compilation uh, with the Upsetters, and it's called Skankin with the Upsetter. Skank is pretty much in the title of every single song here. And no, it's not a bad word. Skank is actually a style of dance for those of you who don't know it. And this is also a limited run of 900, and it collects the best of his dub recordings um, in the period between 1973 and 1974. So if you're into dub, if you're into Lee Scratch Perry, this is definitely an interesting choice. So the next three releases are sadly not available in the US for Record Store Day. They are exclusive to Europe, rest of world, and the UK. And it's sadly because one of these is actually my favorite. And I'm talking about, because I'm a big fan of the band Suede, Auto Fiction Live is the live version of their latest album, great latest album from 2022 called Auto Fiction. And the digital version is available and it's also available in the uh, deluxe version that came out in December of last year on Compact Disc. But the vinyl version is only available outside of the US. It was recorded beautifully in 2023 and during their UK March tour, I believe. And it is available in 2000 copies. So maybe you'll be able to snag one through one of the online uh, foreign retailers, but definitely worth getting. The packaging, very interesting, a little complicated. Uh, as you can see, it's the fold out it folds out like an envelope, but 
very nicely put together, very definitely artistic. And I have to say that I saw this tour in the US and this album comes as close as you can to being at the actual live show by Suede. So Auto Fiction Live by Suede. The next non-US RSD release is a companion album to an album that was released last year. And I'm talking about Alison Goldfrapp. She released in 2023 her first solo album, Breaking Away from Will Gregory in the duo called Just Simply Goldfrapp. Last year, she released her first solo album called Love Invention. This one is The Love Reinvention. And as you may know, it's already available, has been available since last year digitally, and now finally sees a physical vinyl release. It is reworkings of the tracks from her first album and pushing the dance envelope even further. Techno, electronica, deep house, all of the songs from last year's album are reworked and reimagined on the Love Reinvention, which although it is only available outside of the US, it is a thousand copies. So you may get lucky, be able to snag one through one of the uh, online uh, foreign retailers, The Love Reinvention by Alison Goldfratt. Block Party last year released an EP called The High Life, only digitally. Now we finally see the physical release on a very cool, beautiful looking blue splatter vinyl. It is a four song EP. Again, once again, sadly only available outside of the US. This one in 2,000 copies. I highly recommend it. I like this better than actually their last release. Some really exceptional songs on here. Uh, Keep It Rolling is one of my favorites. And The Block Party made their uh, breakthrough debut, I want to say 20 years ago. I think it was 2004 with Silent Alarm. Many people know that one. And I want to say this is almost like a return to form for The Block Party. So the High Life EP. The next release was never featured before on vinyl. When it came out in 2009, it was only a CD and digital release. And I am talking about the supergroup called Tinted Windows. Self-titled album, one and only album. I think they may have toured a few, uh, once or twice in support of this release. And Tinted Windows are none other than Adam Schlesinger from Fountains of Wayne, James Eha from the Smashing Pumpkins, Taylor Hansen on vocals from Hansen, and Bun E. Carlos, the drummer for Cheap Trick. And this is a really cool album that I was not aware of when it came out, and I'm glad it's being reissued on vinyl because it's definitely worth having. Power Pop, those of you who are familiar with Fountains of Wayne and Adam, Adam Schlesinger's work, also, I believe, with the last Monkees album that came out, like, I want to say about five, six years ago. Definitely appreciate this. Like I said, power pop, well-crafted, energetic, well-performed. And this version actually has two extra songs that were not on the original CD. They were only available on import. And I'm talking about the song New Cassette and The Dirt. The Dirt, I believe, was only available on the Japanese release, but Cha Cha, one of my favorite songs, We Got Something, Dead Serious, definitely worth listen, listening to and picking up, available in the US. Yes, this one is, and 2,000 copies, Tinted Windows. So from American pop, we'll go to Welsh pop, and that would mean we're going to talk about the super furry animals and on Record Store Day, they are finally releasing on vinyl the B-Sides and Besides Fuzzy Logic, which is the companion to the same titled album, Fuzzy Logic, released on, I think, 2,500 uh, copies. And originally it was released, uh, the songs on here were released on the deluxe version of Fuzzy Logic from 2017. Uh, the b-sides are curated by the band and some really interesting 
nuggets I would have to say here. If you have to listen to one song, The Man Don't Give a F, and that is taken from uh, the Steely Dan song, uh, Showbiz Kids. So if you like the super furry animals, very eclectic kind of pop, um, very British or Welsh, super furry animals, Fuzzy Logic, B-Sides, and Besides. Another release for the first time on vinyl, only came out on CD when it was released in 2007. There's plenty to go around. 2,000 copies of Dolores or Riordan. Are You Listening? Her first solo album, singer, leader, main songwriter of the band The Cranberries. Sadly lost her a few years ago. Beautiful voice, unmistakable songwriting. You have a lot of that cranberry sound on this record. Like I said, never before released in 2007, first time on vinyl. This album took four years to write uh, when she wrote this or when she prepared. She was taking a break from the cranberry she wanted to find herself apparently at the time. And she wrote 23 songs and 12 of them are featured on her first album. Very melodic, atmospheric, pop. Uh, she says this is where she found her human spirit. Should be reappreciated. A lot of people missed out on it when it came out. Fans of the Cranberries are probably craving this finally on vinyl. Are you listening, Dolores O'Riordan? More releases never featured before on vinyl. We're back to hard rock or hair metal, we should call it. And we'll talk about Motley Crue's. Supersonic and Demonic Relics is the name of the double compilation. Originally came out in 1999. Uh, I believe it was only on CD. And it includes unreleased material, rare material, and they also had made an, uh, an EP called Quartinary. And three of those songs, I think three of the four, are actually included on this compilation. There are some demos, live versions, uh, some of the notable tracks on here uh, that actually were taken from A Decade of Decadence, which was their compilation, like a best of, and newly recorded for that are included on here. And it's Primer, uh, Primary Scream, uh, Angela, and the cover version of Anarchy in the UK. Being a picture disc, you probably know what you're getting into. Yes, you do have that slight lead-in noise, but being the music of Motley Crue so loud, it kind of takes a backseat. You barely forget that it's there. Uh, it's the usual for picture discs, um, but fans of Motley Crue finally will be happy to see this for the first time on vinyl. As you probably know, Record Store Day is the time of the year or the event or the release week where the market is flooded with colored variants and picture discs. We just saw the Motley Crue. These two are picture discs. They fall under that category, but they're very special because they are Zotrope vinyl. And I'm talking about the two releases on Dark Horse Records by George Harrison that see, as you can see here, um, a release on Zotrope vinyl. These are the first two albums. The first one is uh, Wonderwall and the second one, Electronic Sound. Let's talk about Wonderwall first because it is the first one and it originally came out in 1968. This is the first solo album by any Beatle. Originally recorded, it was split recorded between Bombay and London with Indian musicians and also some Western musicians, namely Ringo uh, Starr, Eric Clapton and George Harrison, who originally was not featured in the credits um, and most people thought that he didn't even play on it, but subsequent reissues um, have credited him with playing keyboards and guitar. Uh, Western music meets also Eastern sounds. It was originally composed and intended to be part of, uh, as a soundtrack to the Joe Massa film of the same name, Wonderwall. And it's mostly instrumental and it doesn't really, uh, it has some, vocals but they're not in English so they're more like almost like chants and yeah 
Um, that's the first one by George Harrison. And the next one, Electronic Sound, still by George Harrison, was released in 1969. This also was a first. So we had the first Beatles solo album, or the first Beatle to release a solo album, and the first album, I think, please correct me if I'm mistaken, on Zapple, which was an imprint of Apple Records at the time, which was supposed to focus on more avant-garde type of music, and this definitely is avant-garde. It's definitely experimental. George should get more credit uh, for introducing the Moog 3, the synthesizer, which this came out in 1969, and the Moog we also see in the, uh, during the recording sessions of Abbey Road. Originally, well, he started recording, this is made up of two songs. Each occupy one side of the album. Uh, the first one, which is actually the second song, I think, No Time or Space, uh, he began this in LA. And while he was producing the Jackie Lomax record, he had a Moog that was being played by uh, Bernie Krauss, and he was testing out and demoing this Moog. Little did he know that George was going to use what um, Bernie was demoing and incorporated that into electronic sound. Once he got the Moog also at his home studio in Surrey, he completed the second track, which was Under the Mercy Wall. And interesting, the cover is by George Harrison himself, and it features on the front Bernie uh, Krause on the front playing around with his electronic instruments and on the back period kind of like of craziness and turmoil uh, that is if I'm not mistaken Derek Taylor who is in the Apple offices trying to juggle a lot of the mess that the Beatles were trying to clean up after the death of Brian Epstein so there you have it two releases on Zotrope Vinyl by George Harrison Electronic Sound and Wonderwall. Both, as I said, are pressed on, I think, 8,000, uh, a run of 8,000 copies. So grab them when you can. So let's stay on the topic of Dark Horse Records. And we have another release on Dark Horse Records, and it is Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros, the first album by this ensemble, Rock Art and the X-Ray Style. Hasn't been on vinyl in a long time, at least as a breakout. It was originally included in the retrospective box set of all of the Joe Strummer and Mescalero's work a few years back. Now we're slowly seeing them being broken out of the box set. Last year, I think we got Street Core, um, which I think is the third. And this is the first of them with uh, Joe Strummer with the Mescalero's rock art and the X-Ray style pressed uh, in a run of 1800. So this was the first album by Joe Strummer after his his last solo album, uh, I think it was called Earthquake Weather, came out in 1989. So 10 years after, he finally released new music. Mixed genre on this album. You do hear uh, echoes of The Clash, some electronic influences uh, with electronic drums and synths, a song that was originally recorded, or actually written, for Johnny Cash, probably one of my favorite, Road to Rock and Roll. So I think a lot of these Joe Strummer and the Mescalero albums did not get a lot of attention at the time, but are definitely worth reappreciating. And I guess, what better time than Record Store Day to pick up rock art and the X-Ray style. So two more releases that I wanted to show you that are not available, sadly. In the U.S., they're only available in the U.K., Europe, outside of the U.S., within the realm of Record Store Day, and they are two 12-inch singles. The first one, an artist that I love, is Brian Ferry, and it sees the release of The Right Stuff, which is a 12-inch single, which contains various versions of the track The Right Stuff, originally recorded for Bet Noir, which was his the follow-up to Boys and Girls. It was released, I think, in 1987, and The Right Stuff, originally, was a Smith song. It was instrumental at the time, and it was called Money Changes Everything. Johnny Marr reworked the song. Brian Ferry wrote lyrics, provided vocals, and it all it then became The Right Stuff. 
We have a new mix on here by Johnson Somerset. That's a remix. And then you have the original version, the dub mix, the 12 inch dance mix, and the Brooklyn mix. So, and this is a, actually a very limited release of, I believe only 500. So this may be a little bit more challenging to get online if it doesn't sell out um, <clears throat> online through other uh, foreign record retailers. The next uh, and last 12 inch single that I wanted to show you, also sadly not available in the US, only UK and Europe record store day retailers will get this. And it is the 12 inch single by Madness of the song Embarrassment. At the time, Madness released seven inches and 12 inches of their singles. This never feed, never had a 12 inch release. I think it's a run of 1500 for this release. So the first time Embarrassment gets the 12 inch treatment and it has six songs, the original uh, Embarrassment, then the B-side of the time was Crying Shame. And then it augmented by never before released instrumental version of Embarrassment uh, remixed by Clive Langer. And then other songs are Not Home Today, Ernie, and You Said. So Madness, Embarrassment, 12 inch, only available outside of the US for Record Store Day. Four more releases. Thank you for bearing with me. Slightly long video, but I'm trying to keep it as short as possible and still try to give you the essential uh, facts about these records and trying to show you what's inside of these records. Next up is Groove Armada. Their album White Light is getting a worldwide uh, re-release. has been out of print for quite a while, not exactly sure. It only had an initial run uh, probably since 2010. Uh, this one is going to be widely available, 1500 copies. It is the companion album to Blacklight, which was the album that came out the year before. And White Light is alternate versions of the songs that were on Blacklight, uh, plus one new song. The new song is 1980. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Groove Armada, they are a dance club remix outfit, um, some great remixes. And this one is I listened to this and I had to turn down the volume. It is pumping quite a bit. <laughs> so for those of you that are in a mood for dancing and for clubbing, definitely you might wanna check out, uh, maybe stream it first, White Light by Groove Armada. The next album also is not available, sadly, in the US Record Store Day event, only available overseas, UK, Europe, and I guess rest of the world. And it's a shame because of the bunch that I'm presenting, I think this is my favorite album cover. I mean, how can you not love the face of this pooch? Why the long face? The seventh album by Big Country, a Scottish band known for their trademark guitar sound, especially on their first album, led by uh, Stuart Adamson, no longer with us. Album, seventh album, came out in 1995 has not been available on vinyl since then. It is available on a um, run of a thousand. A collection of intimate and personal songs, that's how Stuart Adamson described it, versus uh, the the uh, impersonal issues that he was tackling on, uh, on his previous songs. At the time, it was not very well received. I'm not sure why. I wasn't familiar with it, uh, but I listened to it and I have to say, I was very surprised actually at how good it sounds. This is an album that's almost an hour long and I would have preferred it be spread across two records, but I was very impressed by how this sounds. It was, it's cut very well. So big country, why the long face? The next one is more of an archival release. At the time when it was released, I believe in 1989, uh, it was only on CD format. I think the following year in 1990 it was released only on vinyl in the UK. Now it finally gets a worldwide release on vinyl for this Record Store Day. And I'm talking about the posthumous live album, Jim Croce, The Final Tour, a run I think of uh, 1800 or maybe 2000. 
includes two songs that were never before released on a Jim Croce studio album, and that is Shopping for Clothes and Ball of Carry Muir. Uh, this also is a very long album, maybe 50, 55 minutes, but it sounds pretty good because mostly it's Jim Croce on guitar and he is accompanied by Muir, Maury Muleisen, sorry, <laughs> on acoustic guitar as well as uh, backing vocals. So not too much going on, so it doesn't suffer for being on one vinyl, on one vinyl disc. And it's very interesting because it has a lot of spoken uh, interludes where he he tells uh, stories. It's almost like a VH1 storytellers where he tells stories background to some of the songs and it's actually uh, quite interesting. So Jim Croce, the final live, the final tour. And last but not least, maybe I did save the best for last, is the critically acclaimed album by Buena Vista Social Club, the first in the series, the OG, <laughs> pressed on gold vinyl. I believe the run is 2500. Came out originally in 1997. For those of you who do not have this album, this is the perfect opportunity to grab it. Same uh, mastering as the 2021 version by Bernie Grunman. Sounds very, sounds excellent cut beautifully on like i said gold vinyl for those of you who are not familiar with this release i'll give you a little bit of background world circuit is the name of the label it was founded by nick gold he recruited rye cooter to play and produce some sessions in havana cuba originally it was supposed to be african musicians who unfortunately could not make the trip, I believe because of uh, visa issues. So they decided quickly to recruit local musicians and a lot of them actually, some more famous than the others and recorded this album in six days at the Egram Studios uh, with 50s era analog equipment. And boy, did they recruit some of the best Ibrahim Ferrer, a vocalist, along with um, Omar Portuondo, also on vocals on a few tracks. Ruben Gonzalez, Orlando Lopez, uh, plays bass on all the tracks. Eliades Ochoa on guitar and Compey Segundo as well. So the creme de la creme of Cuban musicians. And yeah, let's call them Cuban folk songs. Very melancholic, beautiful. Uh, the genres, it's a typical Cuban genre of called son, uh, bolero, danzon. That's the uh, type of songs that you will find on this release. If you've never heard this album, it's magical. Uh, I don't think you'll ever get tired of it. Beautiful album by Buena Vista Social Club for Record Store Day on gold vinyl. For those of you that did make it to the end of the video, thank you so much for sticking with me and watching to the end. I know there was a lot. I know it was a long video. I hope I was able to entertain you and give you some useful information so that you can make those purchases on April 20th on Record Store Day. Thumbs up if you liked what you saw or thumbs down if you didn't or if you have a bone to pick with me. If you're not subscribed yet to the channel, you know it does not cost you anything. So just click that button and it helps the channel a lot by gaining more viewers and gaining more visibility so that I can bring you more videos. Please feel free to browse my library for all the other videos that I've posted. And I guess that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.